Frank Skubik of the Homicide Squad, who's going to be updating us on homicide number 47 for 2012. Uh, thank you, Victor. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the reason that I've called this conference this morning is to provide the community with an update with respect to the investigation of the murder of Leonard Fullerton and also to release some in-car camera video of a vehicle of interest to us in this investigation and to provide some details of a canvas that's going to be conducted tomorrow in the neighborhood in which this offense took place as well as to appeal to specific witnesses uh, in this case and generally uh, to other witnesses that have some information. So just to refresh everybody's memory, on Tuesday, October the 30th of this year at approximately 4.20 p.m., Leonard Charles Fullerton, a 26-year-old man known in his community as Chris or Curls, was shot and killed outside a pizza shop on the southeast corner of Weston Road and Donarda Street in the city of Mount Dennis, or the Mount Dennis area of the city of Toronto. This area is a mix of commercial and residential buildings, and despite the rain, it was evident that there were many people in the area at that time patronizing various businesses, going about their daily routines, or simply passing through. We have spent the past several days interviewing many people and have received a good level of information and cooperation from the community, and that has assisted us in understanding the dynamics of what happened Tuesday afternoon. What remains unclear is to why this occurred and who is responsible. What we have learned to date is that Mr. Fullerton was engaged in a verbal argument with an unknown suspect, a male suspect, on the southeast corner of Weston Road and Donarda. The subject of that argument has yet to be ascertained, nor has it been determined if there was any physical contact between Mr. Fullerton and his assailant. During that argument, Mr. Fullerton walked away. The suspect produced a handgun and started to shoot at Mr. Fullerton, striking him several times. Mr. Fullerton stumbled towards the corner, fell to the sidewalk, mortally wounded. This was a public execution of an defenseless and unarmed man. It is believed that the suspect fled on foot in an easterly direction along Donarda. Within an hour of the murder, a telephone tip was received at 12 Division reporting that the suspected shooter was seen entering a vehicle described as a silver Acura. My first appeal is directly to this caller. As the lead investigator, I would like very much to speak with you to expand upon the information you provided to 12 Division. You provided your name and some other critical information that I'm not going to disclose at this time. You provided us with good direction and we need to speak with you. However, we have been unable to contact you. Please contact me at Homicide directly, and I'll provide you with a phone number at the end of this conference. Other witnesses reported seeing the suspect flee in a small silver car described either as a Honda or a Nissan. While the brand of the suspect vehicle differs, what remains consistent is that it is a small silver car. This car was last seen traveling southbound on Weston Road from the scene in and around the time the police were responding to the sound of gunshots to the shooting of Mr. Fullerton. The suspect in this case has been described as a male black with a light skinned complexion, approximately six feet tall with a thin build. He was wearing a dark hooded wool jacket with some white accents. An examination of the scene revealed that at least five shots were fired by the suspect. In addition to the bullets that struck Mr. Fullerton, it has become evident that a stray bullet entered a building on the west side of Weston Road, just north of the scene, penetrated through a window 
frame through a living room and into a kitchen of an apartment. No one, was, no one was injured as a result of this stray bullet. On Wednesday, an autopsy was conducted on the body of Mr. Fullerton. Despite earlier reports that he had been shot in the head, uh, he was not. The cause of death was reported to be a perforating gunshot wound to the torso. An examination of his clothing revealed that Mr. Fullerton was in possession of substances suspected of being narcotics, which included marijuana and crack cocaine. He was also in possession of a sum of money. As part of our investigation, and we will continue to do this, is an examination of Mr. Fullerton's current lifestyle as it relates specifically to his activities in that community and on the street and more importantly, his affiliation with known gang members in that area. Many of our vehicles in the City of Toronto are equipped with in-car camera systems. Uh, upon examination of the video footage that was recorded, it has become evident that uh, there may be a vehicle of interest captured by one of the officers responding. What I'd like to do now is to have my colleague play that video. I see that it's playing already. And just to set this up, what we're seeing is a police car traveling northbound on Weston Road, just north of Eglinton Avenue in the vicinity of Locust Street. And highlighted in the left side of the screen is an image of a small silver vehicle. This vehicle is seen approximately 1 minute and 15 seconds after the 911 call was reported. Um, it's undetermined at this point if this vehicle is the suspect vehicle. What is important is that I appeal to the driver of that vehicle to take his mind back to Tuesday afternoon and no doubt will recall passing a police car with emergency lights activated and siren as he was traveling southbound on Weston Road. And that, uh, I again, appeal to that driver to, uh, to come forward. Tomorrow, commencing at about 10 a.m., members of the Toronto Police Service are going to be returning to that community and setting up a community vehicle for the purpose of doing a re-canvas uh, of the businesses and residences located on Weston Road, Donarda Street, and as well as far south as Oxford. So I invite any member of the community who is out and about to stop by and speak with the officers, uh, and more importantly, if they have any information to, uh, to reveal that at that time. The investigation into this murder will be solved. I believe firmly that the killer is known in this area or at least frequents this area on a regular basis. The motive, however, at this time is, remains unclear, and specifically what, uh, what it was that precip precipitated the argument that Mr. Fullerton had with this killer. So if anyone has any information that would assist us in advancing this investigation, uh, please call us at the Homicide Squad at 416-808. 7399, that is my direct line, or you could call 12 Division Criminal Investigations Bureau, 416-808-1204, or Crime Stoppers if you wish to remain anonymous. Does anyone have any questions? You mentioned that you had cash, marijuana, and crack cocaine on you. Yes. Are you receiving information that they have possession of any illegal currency, or is it just more people to know about? Well, part of our investigation certainly is to investigate what uh, Mr. Fullerton was involved in at the time. And it's unclear at this time if the possession of these substances had anything to do with uh, what precipitated this argument, which ultimately led to his death. So this is information that nobody got in the area? That's information I hope to glean from the community, those that, that knew him. Uh, certainly uh, having a variety of drugs and having money leads me to suspect that he may have been uh, dealing drugs in that area, and anyone with information to that effect uh, is invited to call. Yeah. Any other questions? Was he known to police then? Yes, Mr. Fullerton was known to the police. He had a minor criminal record. Have you been known to 
Well, our information indicates that while he is not a carded member of any gang, uh, by way of association and affiliation with known gang members, he, I guess, places himself in a high-risk category. Yes, the Five Point Generals, from what I understand, uh, sort of inhabit that area. That's correct, the suspect that we described. You said that Mr. Um, Sullivan was walking away. Did the suspect open fire while he was turned away from him off the lift? Well, at some point, um, he wasn't shot in the back, if that's what you're asking. Um, he was, in fact, disengaging from what witness accounts describe and walking away uh, from this suspect, at which time he produced a handgun and started firing in the direction of Mr. Fullerton. Based on the investigation that we have, Yes, yeah, so I was actually on scene there and became very interested when that second call came over for the sound of gunshots at uh, Falstaff. To this point, uh, any comparisons between the two cases have uh, failed to yield any direct connection, but we're keeping an open mind to any and all possibilities. But as it stands right now, there's no direct link. At the time that video that, uh, that was shown here, does that command you? Is that a silver? I don't know exactly what make it is. Unfortunately, the officer was traveling rather quickly. The first uh, looping image is in real time, and we've tried to slow it down. Uh, we've had several officers look at it and, however, cannot definitively uh, establish a make or model of that vehicle. Do you have a It's difficult to say. Well, with respect to that one caller, uh, I'm not going to reveal precisely the information that was provided, uh, save and except for the fact that uh, this individual called in and described the suspect vehicle as a silver Acura. Uh, this suspect provided his name and other important information to the investigation, and it was expected that we would be in a position to meet with this witness. However, for whatever reason, we have been unable to contact this witness. So. Uh, we're getting to a point in our investigation where we really need to speak with this witness uh, to clarify the information that he has provided. Did you say that you gave the right name? That I don't know. The name provided was a common name. The name that was provided was a very common name. Well, I received information from the family that he had attended a gym in the area. Uh, he left home shortly after noon, uh, went to a gym in the area. But after that, we're having some difficulty uh, establishing exactly what his activities were from the time he went to the gym to the time he uh, was killed. So anyone with information that can assist us in filling that gap would be, would be greatly appreciated if they contacted us. I understand that he lived at home with his mother uh, in an area just north of where he was killed. Uh, I understand that he was the father of two children, uh, an eight-year-old girl, I believe, and a two-year-old son. The, the argument, um, were there other people involved in this, or was it just Mr. Fullerton and the shooter? As I understand, it was just the two. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. That concludes this conference.